there, welcome to Hangouts with DFCC Credit Cards. With this series, we hope to bring you personalities that have excelled in their industries and hopefully share some insight into the current nature of things in the world at the moment and also about their respective industries and how they see those industries going forward, hopefully add some value into your life. So, with that being said, my guest this week is one of Sri Lanka's greatest success stories. He um, also, I have learned, used to be Sri Lanka's very first DJ and uh, also an entertainer. Let me start with that. But a lot of us know him as uh, a man who's created multiple brands, multiple restaurants, multiple um, names that we know and adore. I'll tell you a few of these names. When I tell you these names, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. Commons Coffee House, Harpo's Cafe and Restaurants, The Bay Leaf Italian Restaurant, Harpo's Pizza, Park Street Muse Restaurant, Colombo Fort Cafe, Curve, Harpo's Pizza and Pasta Parlor, uh, Harpo's School of Tourism and Hospitality Management, and the list goes on and on. <laughs> Here with me today is Harpo Gudaratna. Hi. Hi. Good day to you. Good day to you. Does it, what, what goes through your mind when people list out the things that you created? Ah, <laughs> it's something I, I mean, I, I never set out to create all these things, but I set out to do, do different stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and I always wanted to dabble with people, you know, and that was something I enjoy doing yeah. and none other than hospitality and entertainment. I mean, that, those are two related uh, industries which, 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 which you tend to meet up with people. And um, since I left uh, St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia, I always wanted to do something, as I said, with people. And I went into hotel school. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said one of the first DJs, right? Yeah. yeah. So Tell it, me about it, that. Yeah. <laughs> so while I was studying in hotel school, I know I needed some money. You know? okay. And uh, I, there was a friend of mine uh, who uh, she came out to see the, the late Gabo Pires offered me to become a DJ. You know. And nobody knew what a DJ was at that time, you know. Yeah. And I used to play music on in the South, you know, 80, 81, before the 83 riots. And there was there I was DJing in most of the five-star hotels down South. And I was one of Colombo's first DJs who brought mobile discos to Colombo. And mobile was something no one knew what mobile discos was, you right. know. So where we come and fix the mirror ball, put our smoke machines, right. do the whole thing, you know. Kind of like a pop-up disco. Yeah, it was a pop-up. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. It was a pop-up disco. That's a nice word, pop-up disco, yeah. <laughs> So we did, we did that kind of thing and we did, I mean, I did thousands of those discos and so while doing that, I mean, I always was studying as well, you know, so I needed pocket money, as I said, and um, finished my hotel school and here I am, you know, worked at a uh, couple of the five-star hotels. The library was one of my first concepts at the cinema lakeside. Mm -hmm. If you've been to the library, the lounge and music room, I worked there for 10 years and uh, DJed and also now put my hotel school back into practice. And I was the manager of the of the library, and uh, it's been a long road. And since then, I moved uh, as business developer manager to Colombo Hilton, and I also was the first entertainment manager in a five star hotel mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it was very different at that time. You know, we were fighting a fighting a war, yeah. and we were also fighting an insurgency as well at the same time. You know, things were very different then. You know, people think things are bad now. Things are bad then, you know. Yeah. Uh, so if you can go through that, I'm sure you can go through anything right now, you know. Yeah. And um, there I was working in the corporate sector. Uh, then I had the opportunity to set up the Millennium Park, which is now Excel World. That was one of the first uh, things which I set up, the bowling alleys of the first bowling alley in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And uh, pubs, restaurants, so that whole concept there. And then uh, I was fortunate enough to be taken to China to work with Hilton, in uh, work as a consultant to them on the entertainment and marketing field in China and then I went to Japan and worked with Hilton there again and uh, then I came back and I started uh, working as the general manager of Crescat which was a part of John Keel's and then I set up my own business in How 2004. How long have you lived? <laughs> <laughs> I, tried to, I tried to package the whole thing together <laughs> as quick as possible. So 2004 is when I set up my own business right. and uh, it was called Harpo Productions and people asked me not to call it Harpo Productions because Oprah spelled back what is Harpo. Uh, oh. So her company is called Harpo Productions, and her actually Oprah is backward is Harpo, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, and uh, then I set it up in 2004. So my first restaurant was uh, the Commons Coffee House. Uh, that was that again. It was a management contract, and when the owner wanted to sell out, I had the first choice of buying it over. 
and since then it's been 15 years for the 1st of August where I'm celebrating sitting in my own business enjoying what I'm doing yeah. uh, creating stuff which people like to hang out and do and uh, hang out at my places and uh, that's how the brand uh, started growing you know right. so it didn't happen overnight it was a lot of hard work you know set up businesses as I said during the 30 year old insurgency and a lot of difficult times we went through but I always say stay positive there's obviously something going to come out of this silver line you can't have a dip all the time there has to be a you know up at some point in time and I was fortunate enough to see the dip and see the up and see the dip again yeah. <laughs> you know but there you go you know nothing's perfect the other... yeah there's nothing perfect you know nothing's nothing's perfect in life you know so you got to battle through all these things and uh, you know stay positive and come out of it and uh, being able to have a great team you know for yeah. me that's the most important thing I can't do this alone you know, running a hotel school, running uh, so many brands uh, and I'm fortunate enough to have a fantastic team working with me mm -hmm. and the team has been with me, 90% of the team has been with me over the last 15 years so that, that's, that's a great thing, you know, uh, like it's I said, you can family. never, yeah it's a big family, you know, and uh, it's, it's been fantastic and you know, uh, there's no hierarchy saying, you know, I'm so and so, there's everybody chips in, does their job and we all have the time to enjoy that as well, that's important, being, enjoy, being able to enjoy what you do is the key. Of course, you have your stressful days. Yeah. Uh, hospitality is the most stressful business to be in. Currently, it is very stressful, but that's okay. You know, it's fine. We come out of it. <laughs> we we're always optimistic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I'm curious to know how did your um, how did the lockdown affect your businesses? How did it change <coughs> the way your businesses worked and your staff worked? Right. Yeah. So so lockdown was something which uh, which none of us put in our business plan. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew what a lockdown was, you know. We had gone through curfews, so we knew what a curfew was, but a lockdown is a serious thing, you know. Uh, we were, you know, it took us by surprise, obviously. It took a lot of people, it took the whole world by surprise. Mm -hmm. And yet they're taking the, you know, yet people are finding out what the hell this is, you know. But, uh, yeah, it, it took a huge impact on the business. I'll be very honest about it. It took an impact uh, when you are shut down in April, May, you know, half of March, you are shut down. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, gathering your, gathering your thoughts together, uh, focusing exactly where you, where you want to come out of this and how you want to come out of this, uh, talking to your team, explaining to your team, uh, which is not an easy thing to do because they are also very dependent on their wages and yeah. stuff of that nature. You know, we are fortunate enough that most of my uh, team is with me, no, none of them have left maybe two or three people have left but uh, who are you know branching out and doing their own thing so it was a bit of a shocker but uh, we are we are we are we are with it now and we have come to terms with it and we are focusing obviously on on lockweed post covid and you know working around that uh, things have changed in the sense uh, you know patterns have changed nobody would have thought you had to wear a mask and go into a restaurant you know yeah. nobody would have thought of social distancing uh, nobody would have thought of sanitization, yeah. you know, so those are all new things which we have learned and I think that has come to stay, you know, now, you know, like uh, would have we thought that you would take your belt out at the airport and when you had to go, 30 years ago, I never thought of that, today it's like you've got to wear your mask, you know, yeah. so those are things. It which becomes we, the norm. It becomes the norm, absolutely, so, so we, we get used to it and, you know, life goes on, <laughs> you absolutely. see. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, did your, did you, did you know what to do when this happened? Did you have other people coming in and say, okay, maybe this is what we should be doing with our company, this is what we should be doing with our restaurants? Um, yeah, or so were you just following as it came? Uh, yeah, so no, one, one thing is, um, I'm actually the president of the Restaurant Association of Colombo, Colombo Collective Association. So okay. we, form, we formed that uh, before the Easter Sunday attack last year. And we as restauranteurs all came together, you know. And we sat down, we ob obviously lobbied with uh, the tourism ministry, various other government bodies and we followed guidelines given by the health authorities and we are yet following those guidelines, you know. And uh, we collectively sat down and discussed how we are going to take the industry forward, you know, mm -hmm. which is very important because a lot of lives depend on the industry as well, you know. Uh, the restaurant industry, especially a lot of people who are employed in the restaurant industry, who and we on want, it. yeah, who depend a lot on it, you know, their families and all that. So we needed to protect that first, you know, because the more people leave in jobs, the more economic hardship and the more economic impact the country is going to have, you know, mm -hmm. more jobless people, obviously. So we had to protect that first. And uh, from a restaurant group point, you know, I, I got my A team together and we sat down and strategized how we're going to move forward. And um, and yes, we are yet keeping, we are yet moving yeah. <laughs> as as we talk, you know. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I would want to know what you think about the future will look like when it comes to eating out or going to restaurants and we'll get to that. But right now we're going to take a really quick break and yeah. we'll be back with Harper Gunaratna. A bank should be for everyone. Children. Elders. Youngsters. Those looking for jobs. Those with jobs. Those in business. For you, for me, for all of us. From savings to current accounts, fixed deposits, credit cards, leasing, housing loans, DFCC Bank offers you a range of banking products. DFCC Bank. For everyone. Welcome back to Hangout with DFCC Credit Cards. I am speaking to Harper Gunaratna today and before the break, we did talk about how now masks have become the norm and social distancing has become the norm. When it comes to sort of going out to a restaurant to have food with your family, uh, that experience is something we really you know, enjoy and we yeah. cherish. <clears throat> um, how do you see people eating out at restaurants? Um, how has it changed now and how do you see this normal being um, in the next couple of months or so? You see, <coughs> earlier I used to go into restaurants with a buzzing, you know. Yeah. You could go to restaurants, they're back to back, you know. You need to make reservations, you know. You, you never, you know, previously you can just walk into a restaurant, you know, and it was, you know, there. But, uh, but now it has changed. You might walk into a restaurant on a Friday night and see very few people because yeah. you're obviously doing social distancing. And they still might turn <coughs> you away. Sorry? And they still might turn you away. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, so it has changed. I mean, let's be yeah. honest about it. So you, you go do a first sitting, second sitting, third sitting. So you start from six and end at 11 or 12 or whatever. But those are changed. You know, you, you would go into one of my restaurants, for example, or any other restaurant for that matter, and see it buzzing. Mm. But it's no more that. It's not buzzing. Because you're looking at a totally different outlook of dining, as you said. Uh, so people are used to making reservations. And uh, we obviously do our temperature checks and do the, you know, uh, get their telephone numbers and get yeah. all that. So that is what, what we did. We yet carry that out. Yeah. And most restaurants and hotels and every place carries that out because that's become a part of, the li part of life, you know. Yeah. Life goes on that way. Yeah. Do you feel like people have been uh, slight? I mean, I think they have been anyway because it's reduced. But they've been sort of discouraged from stepping out <coughs> too much, and they you prefer to order in. Yeah, I think it has changed to a, to a, to a quite a big extent. You know, let's be very honest about it. A is that people are obviously worried to go out. You know, let's be honest. Most people are worried about it. You know, and uh, over the last three months, I'm talking April, May, June. Now we're in July, end of July. Things have changed for sure. Uh, what you what what we are seeing is there's more. If you look at it, actually, obviously everybody will understand that there are there's, there were two big players in the market when it came to came to deliver, delivery. Mm -hmm. But what has happened out of this COVID? A lot of people have become more innovative. You know, you start from delivery. There's lots of people who are doing delivery now. You know, there were two like. There are more delivery companies open up. More delivery apps open up. In fact, we are launching our app next week we already had a delivery company but we are now taking it to another level mm -hmm. so what i see what has happened out of this whole thing is people uh, technology has got really strong you know and i think that's fantastic you know and uh, that's the way forward i would say technology is the way forward and uh, i see a big change when it comes to uh, dining because yes people are obviously going on the app uh, if they're gone to a, one of their res favorite restaurants now you can order your food home of course, it's a different experience, yeah. but then in the food, the food is the same, you know. So I see, uh, like I said, a lot of new new technology coming in, and uh, that's just changed, and it, it's going to get bigger and going to get better. Yeah. yeah. The culinary industry in general, do you feel like that will change as well? Uh, our ingredients, our spices, um, our <coughs> basic things that we get, we used to import. Yeah. I think that might change as well. Yeah. Right? So obviously, you know, everybody has read about it. There are restrictions now being brought in that we cannot have imported luxury items. You know, we, we call it luxury items from, you know, luxury food, you know. So those are changing. And I think there's an opportunity here. There again, you see that, you see, out of anything, there's always an opportunity. That's, I look at it that way. You know? yeah. And it's a, I see a huge opportunity for the local restauranteurs, local startups. There are so many new people who are now learning to cook at home, learning to innovate stuff at home. And what are they doing? They're using the local ingredients. And why not? 
I mean, you, you know, you look at most of these uh, other TV shows, in, in the international shows, they're using their local ingredients. I think there's a huge opportunity. People are starting their home backyard uh, gardens now, which is fantastic, you know. And this all happened after COVID. Nobody ever thought of growing, uh, you know, vegetables yeah. in their garden, yes. you know. So this is something which, 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 which is going to be great and people are going to get self-sufficient. Restauranteurs will start having their own, uh, you know, vegetable gardens. And I think that's one thing which, which we are looking at doing, you know, producing our own and uh, which, is, uh, which is the way forward. So, as I said, out of a, there's a positive out of anything, you know. <laughs> It might look like a lot of restrictions, it might look like a lot of uh, sort of being pushed into a box, but then with that we are opening new doors. Absolutely, absolutely. There are, there are more home bakers today, yes. right? There are more home cooks today. And I mean, every day you see someone coming up and having, making cookies or making brownies or, I mean, there's so many uh, bread. WhatsApp uh, bread, exactly. So, so, so what has happened is, obviously, a lot of people have been laid out of work. They need to find new avenues of income and they're putting their talent to it. There are a lot of pe talented people who never use their talent and now they're actually seeing what they can do and I think it's a fantastic thing and I'm um, all for that kind of thing you know I just love to see young people innovating new things and you know starting their own stuff you know and that's the way it should be I would always say promote it and push it you know that way. Yeah. Staying yeah. optimistic, staying positive. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to more about how positive we can be about the future right after this break. Every time you swipe your DFCC credit card, get 1% cash back into your account. Experience double the happiness with DFCC credit cards. DFCC Bank. Keep growing. Hang out with DFCC Credit Cards is the name of the show. My guest today is Harpo Gunaratna. We've been talking about um, the culinary industry and the norm that is now. But looking forward to the future, what do you think uh, are some of the things that restaurants can maybe look into when it comes to expanding their businesses in the next two to three years, yeah. given <clears throat> the situation? I think uh, anybody setting up a new restaurant, we look at first. They look at design concept. Mm -hmm. Design will have to change, you know, because we never, uh, when we set up a restaurant 10, 15 years ago, we we obviously designed it in a very different pattern, you know. So design concept will change. Food food concepts will change. Uh, and uh, what's most important thing is training, you know, training your staff to adjust to the situation. I think that is going to be top priority, you know, where. Uh, all our staff will have to be taught and briefed and have to learn the new norm of going out and eating. So I think those are going to be a crucial part of it of going forward and the future of the restaurant industry. And uh, I would see, you know, the next year or so, you know, um, there will be lots of people who are going to also wind up. Let's be, you know, holding it is going to be very difficult, you know. So the, the, the fitter you are, the stronger you are, maybe, maybe you'll survive, you know. Uh, but uh, saying that, uh, uh, things we will change is, like I said before, the technology is changing. So obviously everything else will change with technology yeah. and going forward that's going to happen. I see uh, things like frozen food is going to be a big thing, you know. Supermarkets, if you look at the trend of more and more supermarkets are opening up, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, more and more grocery stores are opening up and more vegetable vendors are coming out on the streets and selling out stuff of that nature. So I see those getting bigger and bigger, you know, and the frozen food industry, if you look at anything anywhere in the world, they are looking at that's going to be a, a way forward because people are obviously, you see, what's going to happen is till a vaccine is found, it's going to be always at the back of your mind, you know, uh, what's, what is it? What is it? Yard travel is going to be a problem as well. If you look at that, you know, people are not going to get on a aircraft and just take off because there's yeah. so much uh, in it, you know. So, uh, so the restaurant industry is going to evolve that way, you know, and uh, look at from events. People are not cutting back on events, you know, you cannot go into crowded places now, you know. So that is going to change a lot, you know. Uh, so those are things which we will have to learn to live with. And we obviously learn to uh, do, our, do our revenue forecasting and all those things will change, yeah. you know. But uh, saying that, like I said before, you have that option of having, having the delivery option as well, you know. I, would, I am looking at doing more mobile, mobile pizza trucks now. 
because I mean, you know, those are things which we already have a mobile pizza truck. So I want to innovate that and make the truck business big. Make bring yeah, the food because, to the people. Yeah, and the truck culture has to grow. Yeah. You know, so there you don't, you know, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, and your cost of lay, your cost layout is not huge. You know, so I think things of that nature will also grow. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, like I said, you know, innovating, innovating of the food will will become bigger and bigger. And um, uh, you know, it'll take time, but uh, we will come out of this for sure. We will come out of this, but uh, but staying positive. And as, like I said from the outset, it's very important to to look at training and uh, stuff of that nature. You know. The, not only the restaurants, the hospitality industry per se, you know, mm -hmm. from hotels to restaurants to everything. Uh, the whole thing is changing now, you know. Or who would have thought that you had to go to temperature check when you had to go to a hotel or to a restaurant, you know. You only go do it at home or go to a hospital and do it. But that, that's what you've got to learn to live with and uh, that's going to happen, you know. And that's become pretty normal now yeah, already. Not, yeah, people have got used to it now, yes. you know. Uh, when you walk into any of our restaurants, people will, you know, they, you don't have to tell them, they sign their name, put their telephone number, yeah. contact tracing, you know, all those things are happening yeah. now, which is fantastic. So, so, so we, we are used to it now, people are used to it now, you know, which is very, very good, you know. But you're definitely optimistic about the future. Yeah, absolutely, you have to be, you know, and yeah. I think it's, it, it'll, like I said, you know, more innovation coming through, lots of new things will happen and uh, uh, staying positive, as I said, and making, making sure what you know, what you're doing, you know, and... Uh, uh, also, um, having a good team with you, you know, because in a crisis situation, you, you, you need a good team. Mm -hmm. You know, you need a team which believes in you. Uh, and that is very important, you know, as much as everybody has gone through uh, the last three months, which is a very tough period for the hospitality business, uh, it's, it's not going to recover immediately, but it will recover, but it's just managing to keep in holding fort and waiting, and it will, it will recover. I have my positive thoughts on that. Absolutely. I think that's a great ending note for this conversation. <laughs> thank Harper, you. thank you so much for talking to us. It's been a pleasure yeah, kind a of digging your brain into <laughs> how you see the situation. Thank you very it's much for pleasure. having me on the show. Thank you so much. And with that being said, just a reminder that if you want to win cash courtesy of DFCC, we are going to be giving you an opportunity to do that right now. I will ask you a question and if you know the answer to that question, you might be one of the three lucky winners to win 10,000 rupees courtesy of DFCC. Here is your question, listen well. Name three current dining offers for DFCC credit card holders. That's the question once again. Let's name three current dining offers for DFCC credit card holders. If you know the answer, send us a message the answer via message onto the DFCC Facebook page with your name, your NIC and your contact details. You might be one of the three lucky winners to win 10,000 rupees cash each, um, courtesy of DFCC. So once again, thank you so much for joining us. Harpo, thanks. you as well. Yeah, and we you. will see you next week with yet another personality to feature on Hangout with DFCC Credit Cards. My name is Sasha Karnaratna. Have a great day.